Hi team, Blake Sargent here, and I'm going to dip into a topic here which is may divide people and it may even piss some of you off, but that's not actually my intention. But I'm going to talk about the associate model versus the employee model. Um, look, both of which have their merits, and I'm going to just share um, some findings that we've had over the years within our own practice, Optimize Health, but then also within um, all the practices. Um, that we work with um, and it's a tough one because a load of people actually go through a stage of being an associate because they go well look I'm in control of my own life I you know I then turn up and I give I, I get 50% of whatever I bill or 60% or 40% whatever your split is um, and probably the associate thinks well the business owner is lucky because well you know I'm doing all the work and they just take 50% and if you've seen in a, a, another video um, that I did about the practice percentage pyramid, we actually talk about how when you take into account the costs of rent and support and running and for them to be, for there to be any profit left over, like giving away 50 or 60% to us, an associate is actually a really, really tough model as a business owner to make money. You know, so from the financial perspective, being an associate is actually way better for an associate than it is for an employer. Financially, having employees as an employer is, is far better. You know, the numbers actually work because as soon as you, if you only have an associate, then you're giving 50% away straight away. And then the month, numbers just really don't work when you've got to take into account all the other overheads. But the other thing about um, associate versus employee is that within the associate model many people work for multiple places now imagine I'm run, trying to run a team like a football team yeah and I've got a bunch of people and they what they play for me for two days a week and then they go and play for a competitor another day a week and then they go and play for another team another day of the week and that's often how the associate model works out so how the hell can I build a committed team that's high performing when my players are playing elsewhere the whole time. And with associates, you can't even get them to turn up to training. I.e., They don't have to turn up to training. They don't have to turn up to team meetings because really they work for themselves. Um, and so if you want that sort of model, which we call guns for hire, you know, like not in a bad way, it's just, you know, if you want that rental model of loads of people coming and going, but not actually building an integrated team, then that's fine. But then just understand that that model can only take you so far. Um, and the business holds very little value because you have a rental model, not a, a team of people. We've been through an interesting time recently um, in the UK as well, where there's a law called IR35, which stands for Inland Revenue. 35. It started in 1999 and it's, it's developed since and it was basically introduced to fill any loopholes for tax avoidance. Now, not to say sole, sole traders or associates are doing it to tax avoid, but what the government say is, well, if somebody's a sole trader, you know, then who's responsible for paying their national insurance and ensuring they pay the right amount of tax. So gradually over time, they've tried to fill this hole. And there was a landmark case with Uber where the government said, these people work for you. And Uber said, no, they don't. We give them the work, but they don't, they work for themselves. And the government went, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck and looks like a duck, it's a duck. They get all of their income from you. So somebody's got to be responsible for their pension and their national insurance. And so Uber then, um, you know, this is a landmark case. Uber then now have to pay for all of the people who drive for them as if they're employees because the government don't want any uh, loopholes. What then happened as a late, the most recent iteration is they've reduced the, they've said any business that's 10 million or over, anybody who contracts for you, who makes the majority of income for you, even if they work from the majority of their income from you, even if they work for five, 10 different people, if they get more than about 50% from you, the government go, they work for you. 
somebody's got to pay their pension and national insurance. And I tell you what, it is the responsibility, the legal responsibility of the employer to make sure that is paid, not the associate, not the sole practitioner, not the um, sole trader, right? And so the next iteration we feel, which is not here just yet, will be that movement towards saying, look, if an associate works for you, um, or as an associate, if you work somewhere for um, more than 50% of the time, or you make 50% of your income from somewhere, then it's actually, it's all right for the associates because you're not legally responsible, but the employer will become responsible for that. So this is a space we're looking more and more into. Um, and, you know, we go down 100% down the employment route, but we actually have a payment model um, a hybrid model where we actually employ everybody, but then we give them a certain amount of percentage so they actually can become in charge of what they earn. Then everybody wins because they get paid holidays as well, but they get to be in charge of what they earn and they have the security of being an employee and they're committed to a team and they don't actually have to go and work for five different places to make sure they don't make more than 50% from one place. You know, so I know this one might divide people. I've always said, if I had um, been a practitioner at some stage, I would have been an associate. There's nothing wrong with being an associate. Um, but certainly as we move forward and with the way things are looking at changing um, in the law, we feel, and, and just as an employer, if you want to build a committed team of people, then you want people who are there with you five days a week um, and not working elsewhere so i'm sure that'll open up some uh debate um it's just our thoughts it's just our experience working with lots of people of you know the benefits of work having an employee versus an associate but hope that helps